Today I'm going to talk about contact mics, how they are made, how to make one yourself and how they function so that you can make your own. Um, they are one of the easiest, cheapest and one of the most fun things to play around with when you're making music and sound and experimental noise um, and they're super duper cheap, which I've probably already said, but that's fine. Okay. Contact mics consist of an electrical component called a piezo electric transducer. That is one of these. This is a very small version of one of them. And it has this little white disc in the middle, which is a ceramic, which is made of the, normally made of a uh, material called lead zirconate titanate. It's probably pronounced wrong. It's fine. Um, it exhibits a effect known as the piezoelectric effect, uh, which is a naturally occurring effect. A lot of just minerals and crystals have this effect, but certain ceramics get manufactured because they have much more effective piezoelectric response. Um, and what this uh, uh, phenomena is, is when this material or a piezoelectric material gets stressed, put under strain, moved and sort of bent or shaped, it will create an electrical charge. Um, when you combine it with a conductive material such as the disc on the back, uh, actually let me show you one that's wired up to make it a bit clearer. This is a slightly bigger one which has been uh, wired up. So there is a solder joint on the ceramic disc and a solder joint on the um, conductive uh, disc. That's a very dodgy solder join, ignore that. So when this one is put under any kind of strain or any kind of movement, or when these two things move against each other, it will create an alternating current in the same shape as that uh, stress, that strain. Um, so if this were put on a surface that was vibrating, it would create an alternating current in the same shape as that vibration, as long as the join between this and the surface were secure enough that this would actually bend slightly. But yet incredibly, incredibly sensitive. Um, so it does not need to be properly bent out of shape. And I'll do a, a demonstration in a second to show you just how sensitive these are. Um, what's interesting about these as well is that they're not just used to generate current. But if you put current into them, the actual material will bend as well. So these can be used as uh, speakers or ultrasonic sound devices. They can create incredibly high currents as well sometimes, enough to create a spark, uh, which is why they're sometimes used as igniters for barbecues or industrial ovens. If you ever have that igniter where you have to push and it clicks, it makes a spark, it's normally got a type of piezoelectric component in it. Uh, so I'm going to show you how we wire this up and make some noises. So I'm going to switch cameras. So we have our guitar jack, which is already going straight into my um, amplifier. I'm going to use some crocodile clips. One there. One on the tip. And I'm simply going to connect them to the red wire and the black wire. It doesn't really matter which one goes where. One on the red, one on the black. So at the moment, my amplifier is volume is all the way down. If I do this, you can't hear it. If I turn it up. The slightest vibration will create a current which goes through the wires and into the amplifier and made audible. And like I said, they are very, very, very sensitive. Um, so this is really the easiest way to amplify an acoustic instruments. You get um, properly manufactured grade contact mics, which um, often include other bits of circuitry to actually make the sound nice and clear and um, more balanced 
but if you are just beginning, you don't really need to worry about that stuff. So this is a simple instrument that I've made with my year five classes. I take this to the front. It will quite easily pick up the sound of the string being plucked. So if this were put on the underside and added to a proper jack, then that would be a way to uh, include amplification into our instruments. So, a few things to note. You can get these elements in a variety of different sizes. This is a fairly standard one. This is a much, much bigger one. Um, you can get teeny, teeny, tiny ones. Um, people say that there's a big difference in the frequencies that they can um, uh, capture, which there could be an answer truth to that. I'm not sure. I do know that the amplifier you use makes a big difference in the sound. So if you are going to go further into the details of these, then you would need to match the impedance of the element with the amplifier to get the broadest range of frequencies. Now, these ceramic parts are very fragile. So when the, the most common way to break these is when this solder joint just gets ripped from the disc. They are a pain to solder back on, but it is possible. But the, the best way to secure them is just to use a piece of tape over the wire to hold the wire in place so that you don't put any strain on the actual solder joint. Um, if you were going to put this into an actual instrument, you would need a, a mono jack chassis. And all you do is one wire to one of those terminals and one wire to the other one and then solder it in place. If you're not comfortable soldering it yet, you can cold solder. So you could use something like the Bare Conductive Electric Paint, which is a um, high carbon uh, ink which conducts electricity. And you would just put a dab of this on the wire and that would hold it in place and keep your solder pretty strong. Um, I've used these contact mics tons in my work um, and they last they last a really long time as well. This is a book guitar that I've made probably 10 years ago and because those discs are so nice and flat I put a contact mic in the pages of the book and because they're so sensitive um, it still picks up the vibration of the string through the pages which have been glued together. Turn it on. Not in tune. Um, so yeah, really, really good um, component. Super easy, super cheap. Um, Keep in mind the materials that it is being covered with. If you squash it too flat, it won't have space to wiggle. So you can try embedding it in concrete and resin and stuff like that. Um, but if it hasn't got a tiny bit of space to wiggle, or if the material is so strong that it won't have any vibration going through it, which actually isn't really possible, um, you're not going to get as much of a sound. Um, also, if it's too loose on an instrument, it's not going to pick up the sound. Um, so if you have taped it on, but the tape comes off and it's just on the tape, and it's only going to be picking up the vibration through the tape and not the actual instrument. Um, yeah. Have fun. <laughs>